Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today we're going to talk about achieving variable line widths. Now, variable line widths kind of come into play primarily when you're doing line art. The topic actually came up because somebody asked in a comment about being able to do variable line widths from a vector graphics video that I did. And at first, when I saw the question, my mind immediately went to um, a tool like Moho or Inkscape, those kind where you can click on a particular node and be able to individually adjust the width of the line at that node. So having that kind of mindset, my first reaction was PaintShop Pro doesn't have that ability. However, whenever I am faced with a situation like this, that thought kind of sticks with me. And then I started thinking about ways that we can achieve that. Um, so I'm going to show two different ways that we can achieve variable line widths. One is just with regular painting. The other is with vector graphics. So let's get to it. So to start off, I feel like it's necessary to at least address um, a common approach to being able to do variable line widths and that's if you're using a drawing tablet and you have a pen with pressure sensitivity um, and if you're using just a standard paintbrush uh, you know set to whatever size and hardness that you like that as you draw strokes um, you know the more pressure that you apply the thicker the line will be and obviously the less pressure conversely the thinner the line will be so you can get some very dynamic looking lines I think they, unless if you're really good and you have really good, you know, smooth hand movements or whatnot, that uh, you won't get that very clean, refined sort of look at the edges. Uh, case in point, I'm actually not very good at using a drawing tablet, hence I hardly use the one that I have. Um, but um, it is an option. It is a way that you can achieve this effect, although not as vector graphics. So now moving on to the vector graphic approach. What I found is that um, using the pen tool, you know, we can create some lines and then by selecting the nodes, we can do a duplicate and offset. And that's what's going to facilitate our ability to create sort of a thick line. And then we're going to be joining some nodes to give it that sort of, you know, trailing off into a sharp edge. So to d demonstrate this, what I'm going to use is the pen tool. And I'm going to be working in the Bezier curve sort of line addition. And then um, just you'll want to set your width to be something that, you know, is visible given the resolution that you have. And then as well, always remember when drawing lines that you'll want the, you know, outline color to be set. And in my case, I'm going to keep the uh, fill transparent just because I want to be able to see only the line initially and then we'll see how we're going to swap those to to get the final effect. So I'm going to start off just by drawing a simple curvy line and I can just do this by clicking in one spot, clicking in another and holding and then dragging and then that's how we can create like a curve, right? And then so what that does is then it draws that but we're still kind of active, so I can still click, you know, another another node and I can, you know, do something like that. So now I've got three nodes and I've got like a nice, very smooth, curvy line. So I can finish my edit of that by clicking that apply button. So now since I hit apply, what that's kind of done is really deselected everything. Uh, so now actually what I want to do is actually click on this curve to make it selected and then go back to the pen tool and we'll see our nodes are back again. And what I can either do is I can drag to select all the nodes to make sure they're all actively selected or I can just hit control A and we'll see that it automatically selects all those nodes. And then this toolbar here becomes active. And so then what we can do is we can say, duplicate and offset. So now the direction is going to kind of matter here, right? And that's what these duplication X and Y offsets mean, right? So so if I want to have the thickest part of my line be say somewhere in the middle, then I'm going to want to offset either up or down. If I'm wanting it to be more so kind of on the sides, then I'll want to shift it left or right. But in this particular case just for demonstration, We'll make the middle part thicker. So what I can do is change the X to zero and then change the Y. Well, we can leave it at five and see how that looks. 
So once I've got my number set, I can click the X. And then what we'll see is it kind of made, you know, a shift and it kind of did what we wanted, but maybe not quite as dramatic as I'd like. So I'm going to undo that and maybe do something much more dramatic like 20. All right, so now we have a much thicker curve body in the middle. And then we can click off somewhere and we can still edit these nodes. And so what we're going to do is make this one contiguous curve object. And by doing so, we can just click on one of these nodes, for example, and start to drag it. And we wanna drag it close enough to the other one so that the words join show up. And then what that does now is that that becomes one singular node, as you can see, that you can manipulate together. So now we're gonna do the same for this other one here. And there we go. So now we've got a curve that's got some sharp edges at the end and a filled region in the, a thick region in the middle. And then all I have to do is switch my, swap my materials so that now that line looks like a singular stroke that kind of trailed off coming in or, you know, emerged, if you will, coming in and then trailed off at the end. So that was an example with, um, you know, a, a kind of multi-angled curve. Let's do just something even simpler where we just do two nodes and a single, a single curve. Now, if in this case, if we were to try to do the duplicate thing, it wouldn't quite work out because as soon as I tried to drag the, the two nodes together, I would have the same thing. So actually, let's, let's do that. So there I've duplicated it, but then now if I try to drag these two nodes together, what's gonna happen is they're gonna overlap perfectly and, and we, don't have, we don't have anything. We haven't achieved anything. So then when you find yourself, you know, in a situation like this where you're like, well, this is the curve I want, you draw the curve and then you can add by holding control and putting the cursor over the line, you can add, you know, an extra couple set of nodes. And so this is going to be sort of our thickness region. So then now if we were to do join here and join here, let me zoom in a little bit. even further there we go that now we still have a thick region right and and what's nice about nodes is that you know at any point you can always you know readjust if you feel like something doesn't quite you know fit the way you originally were planning for it to be you always have that freedom to re-manipulate to get the look you're looking for so now we've done demos of lines where they end in like these sharp points. But what if we want a line that ends in a sharp point, but is sort of like cut off at the other end, right? Something more like maybe a calligraphy brush stroke. So we can do the same kind of thing. And I'll just do a basic line again, or a singular curve again. So we'll just click here, kind of add a little bit of character. select both the nodes and then we'll do our duplicate but let's say this time I want to go in this direction I'm going to give it like a negative 20 and a negative 20 for both hit the check mark and then we'll see it moved up in that direction now, one thing you'll notice about the character of these nodes here is that like these guys, for example, they don't have any handles on them. And these are the nodes that we started with. But then when you look at these ones, sorry, if we look at them individually, we'll see these have really long handles on them in both directions. And these ones don't have anything, right? So what that's going to do is it's going to make the behavior very different. For example, if let's say I select these two and I zoom in and right click and say, I want to, you know, join these two. In the case of these nodes without handles, it just creates a nice, you know, simple line. And then for example, if we came over to this end and then just, you know, dragged this one till it said join, 
then now I've got kind of like what we were saying, right? We wanted sort of a thick cutoff end trailing into a very fine point node. So, so what I would recommend is if you have a situation where you want a thick end and a thin end, always start your line on the side where you're going to want that thick end just so you can make that simpler for yourself. But if you do have a situation where you do want the, you know, after you've drawn it and you don't want to go back and change it, what you can do is you can select the node and then you can say node type and I honestly couldn't tell you how what the heuristic is here but you can either do before or after one of them essentially will work and what it does is it cuts off that that node at that point there so then if we do the same for this one in this case it seems like it's after so then now that those two are cut off if I select them and then say join we'll get that nice line on this side as well. And so then grabbing this node once again. Interestingly enough, the name is the same, but it has two operations. Joining two nodes either draws a straight line or in this case, overlapping nodes is like a join. But there we have, once again, cut off thick side and a sharp point on the other. And so that's essentially the technique with all of its nuances. The, the whole idea is that by using the duplicate and offset that you can, you know, have a nice simple starting point to give you one of your lines some thickness. And you can start off your drawing by actually just creating the lines and then working the thickness later. I have a demo that I'm going to show right after the end of this video. Uh, that just shows this in action where I'm going to be doing some line art for a hummingbird and essentially you'll see that I'm just drawing the lines around the whole figure first and then applying this sort of line width adjustment as a second phase. But anyway, for now, uh, that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new comment, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page on the link on the TV and enjoy the Hummingbird demo.